Hope Church South Bedfordshire has had a group of people meeting each weekday morning to look at God's Word and what it means for us. We hope you join us on this journey, and as you do so, ask God to speak to your heart as well. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Our desire is we find God's abundant life for each one of us. Good morning and welcome to our podcast. Uh, This morning we're looking at Matthew 8, 1 to 13. I'm going to pray and then Bob's going to read the passage for us. Let's pray. Lord, we just worship you this morning. What a wonderful Father we have in you. And Lord, we just thank you that as we look at this passage and we see how Jesus demonstrates who you are to us, it's just so powerful. And we thank you that the words we look at are living and active. These words come to life as the Holy Spirit breathes upon us. And so, Lord, we just ask that as we uh, discuss this passage, you can bless us, you can reveal things to our hearts. But, Lord, we also pray for those listening to this podcast that they be blessed, (coughs) blessed by who Jesus is, blessed by what he carries and demonstrates of the Father's heart. And, Lord, we just worship you today. Amen. 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 I'll start at Matthew seven twenty-eight. When Jesus finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. When he came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately he was cured of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, See that you don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When Jesus heard Pernium, a sentry sent him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. Thank you, Bob. Wow, what a passage. And Mm. so, um, you know, if we thought we couldn't get, we were at the pinnacle with Jesus' teaching, we've got Jesus demonstrating the kingdom of God, not not just with his words, but with his actions. Um, I think it was John Wimber who said um, that Jesus kind of operated tell and show, show and tell. Um, He he mentioned what God's kingdom was about, and then he demonstrated it, and then he demonstrated it, and then he taught about it. And the two go hand in hand, and this is what we are beginning to see. So I really appreciate you starting those those verses earlier about the coming down the mountain and kind of into this. And in this, we've got a couple of really incredible miracles. One is a leper. And the context for leprosy was very often leprosy was understood to be a curse from God. 
in in how people have picked it up. It's not that something that God said. <laughs> there were people who had leprosy in the Old Testament who had disobeyed God, but that kind of reputation was around leprosy. So leprosy was the kind of incurable disease of the day, one of them. It was a key factor. It was full of fear. It was um, one of those kind of diseases. It isolated you from community. If you got leprosy, you had to move away from your family because it could be contagious. You had to show yourself to priests and they say, no, you're a leper. Off you go. And you'd have to live outside the city. Um, you'd also have to have a bells to ring so, so that no one would come close to you. You had uh, all the kind of like isolation of COVID, if you like, but worse. And um, you, you had that kind of experience of life. And no one could touch you or they were unclean. And so it was like a death sentence. It, it was horrendous. And here Jesus reaches out and touches the leper. And he is healed. And then Jesus tells him, go and show yourself to the priest. Go and do all the right things to get clear of this and prove it's all right. And then you can be back with your family. And you don't tell anyone about it, but just go and do that. And and that's powerful. And then you've got the centurion and the centurion with his faith. And just, you don't even need to come near me, Lord. Just say the word. And there's incredible faith there. So I'm sure we'll have a great conversation um, about these miracles and, and what they show us about God's heart and God's love and God's care for the world. I think the first one, the, uh, the man with leprosy and the way Jesus reached out and touched him, a very deliberate demonstration Um to the crowd, there was, it says there was a multitude that had um, continued following Jesus after the Sermon on the Mount. Um, they continued to follow him. So it was a huge demonstration. Um, I'm reminded of um, the news we saw years ago, with Princess Diana touching the, the man who had AIDS. And what a... Um, what a headline that was, that she'd reached out and touched someone, um, and put herself at risk, people thought. And here, Jesus was touching the outcast, the, a man that nobody would go anywhere near. People would keep their distance. They, would, they were terrified of catching this awful disease. But Jesus reached out to him and touched him. He didn't just say the words of healing, which he could have done. He could have even um, just raised his hand. He could have done anything and uh, without touching this man, he reached out and touched him and said he was willing to heal him. The man had come with faith that Jesus could heal him, um, but, but wasn't sure that he was willing to heal him. Here we have Jesus saying, yes, I am willing. Be healed. Mm. I think you've raised a fantastic point there, Bob. Mm -hmm. we, we know God can do anything, right? Mm -hmm. We know he, he can create the whole world. We know he can do loads of things. The key question for us is, if, is he willing? Mm. And that's where our faith struggles sometimes. We, we know God can do it. But is he willing to do it for me? Is he willing for the, is he willing? And here Jesus goes, I'm willing. <laughs> it's just such a beautiful statement. The power's there, but is he willing? He's willing. And there's things over our lives where, if this is Jesus demonstrating what the Father's like, the Father is willing. That's a great point, Bob. <laughs> And I'm thinking of the courage of the man with the leprosy to actually come and because obviously he was mixing with the – there were lots of people at this point. So, um, you know, he had to to enter and, and join the crowds um, mm. to, to get near to, to Jesus. And and what a huge thing for him to, to do when he <clears throat> maybe shouldn't have been there, <laughs> really. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, in in their, their the way of society, then for him, 
And um, maybe he'd heard that, Je- that Jesus does uh, healing and, um, you know, I don't know. It'd be lovely to, to know more of the story. Um, and, um, and and others would have seen what Jesus was, was uh, saying to, the, you know, the man with leprosy. So... Uh, such an amazing, amazing story for, it, for people to mm. see and be involved, involved with. If imagine if we were in the crowd and society had <clears throat> was like that, but to see the demonstration of how Jesus was with him, mm. um, so so beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you wonder how he gets through the crowd, don't you? Yeah. You, you just think, yeah. how does he do that? <laughs> Does he just yeah. ring his little bell and go, I've got leprosy, <laughs> yeah. I'm not afraid to use it. Excuse me, excuse me. But I suppose also um, he done his part, didn't he? It's like you've got to be willing to go. And, and Jesus saw the effort that he'd done to get to him in yeah. a way. You know, so there's that two-part thing going on. Jesus saw... It's like pick up your mat and walk, isn't it? It's like you've got to do something. And he saw him doing that. And he knew this, how hard it was for him to do that. And then that's when Jesus said, just reached out his hand and done it. Mm-hmm. It's just, mm-hmm. I am willing, he said, you know, be clean. That that surrender again, isn't it? Surrendering mm-hmm. and, and, and believing and, and doing your part to come to God as well as. Mm-hmm. Jesus is quite willing to do it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yeah, he knelt before him, didn't he? So he humbled himself yeah. to, to kneel before Jesus at his feet. Um, yes, yeah. And and I think what we miss here, and, you know, joking, joking aside about how he got through the crowd and all that, mm-hmm. but you see the compassion of Jesus. What we pick up on here is it's not just, oh, he needs healing. Okay, tick box, healed. Mm. Uh, there's a context for this. There's compassion. Mm. There's understanding. Mm. And, and and if Jesus is showing us what God's like, you've got an incredible sense of God understands the context for things as well as what needs doing. Yeah. Mm. And actually that's a beautiful picture of God. Mm. and uh, Jesus treated the sick people who came to him as individuals, didn't he? He could have, uh, there were probably many, many people in that crowd who were sick and in need of healing, and Jesus could have just put his arms out, done anything, and, and healed lots of people in a mass mass healing but he <laughs> he um he took this man as an individual and spoke to him as a uh, an individual a, a special person and we i think we see that in all jesus's healings it was all individual encounters with people um mm. which is interesting i think yeah. i think it's also interesting he told the man to go to the priests <laughs> Yeah, and tell yeah. them. Um, don't, don't tell anyone <laughs> yeah. else. I've seen this with with other people. Jesus told people not to tell any, not to tell anyone else. I'm sure a lot of them did. How could you keep something <laughs> something like that a secret? But he he told him to to go to the priests mm. and testify as to what had happened. And I think mm. that's very interesting because he would have mm. the priests would have then had to um, get the books of the Lord down from the shelf and find out what what they had to do if someone was healed of leprosy. Uh, yes, yeah. It wasn't a, something they'd perhaps come across ever before. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, special sacrifices had to be offered um, and they would have to instruct this man what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, uh, I think that's very interesting. What what effect would it have had on those priests? Mm. Wow, yeah. I, I love the idea of them dusting off the scroll. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I think the, the, the sense of mm. celebration around the sacrifice, this would be an incredibly, I mean, you know, you, you think there's things we celebrate in life, milestones, life and things like that. 
but the celebration for this family of getting this guy back mm. just huge. Yeah. Yes. And and the priests were the people who had the authority to say this has happened. And I think sometimes with miracles, we think if we close our eyes and, and don't look, it, it'll it'll happen or whatever. You know, there, there's that kind of approach. That, that's a bit. Mm. But actually, when God does a miracle, it shows up. I remember asking medical people, you know, I was praying for someone with diabetes. And I said, how will you know this person's healed? Do the, you know, what advice do we give? And they said, no, just keep doing your medication as normal. Keep doing everything as normal. If you're healed, you'll know about it quickly. <laughs> It'll show up in all the readings. Oh, yeah. And yeah. and actually, in this, it's Jesus saying, actually, you're healed. It's gone. Go to the priest and get him to do the test. Do the normal medical thing here. Mm. And actually, you'll, it'll show up. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and then you do your sacrifice and do all the things and throw the party and all the rest of it. And I think that proper process that's in the law, Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill it. And here he is fulfilling the law around leprosy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Sort of change gears, but and go on oh. to the centurion, mm. Um, mm. As, as Monty Python used to say, and now for something completely different. <laughs> um, but but in, in some ways it's the same because um, you've got um, – someone who's ostracized by Jewish society because they're a Roman centurion, one of the people helping establish Roman rule over and keep Roman rule over Israel. And, and yet he's a believer mm. and, and yet he's, he's, he's open to, to God and, and he comes to Jesus mm. and, and the, you know, everyone's like, Oh, well, what's Jesus going to do about it? And Jesus has no tribal boundaries. Just like he had no boundary with the leper, he reached out and touched him. Mm -hmm. With the centurion, has the same approach. And it's a challenge to us. We often put up tribal boundaries where God doesn't. Mm -hmm. And it was compassion that the um, centurion had for his servant. Um, And that, that spoke a lot to me, that, um, he, he had such a heart of compassion that he would go and, and get help, knowing what that, again, what that would look like for him to actually go and approach Jesus. And, um, yes, he, his boldness, but his compassion and his care for his servant um, mm. that would give him the, uh, that sort of prompt him to, to go and get help. I'm sure he could have got many, many other servants, but there, there was something about him, wasn't it, that he, yeah. he loved, he cared for his servants, obviously, very, very well and looked after them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Which wasn't really the normal way of treating no. servants, I think. No. Servants no. were regarded as, as property to be bought and sold as tools to be used to, you know, to work. Um, and if, if they got ill, um, I, I think um, the masters were entitled to kill them if they were no use to them anymore. So wow. this centurion really humbled himself, I think. You know, he's a man with power, man with authority, had all these men under him. He said, go, and they went. He said, come, and they came. Mm-hmm. Um, but the compassion he had for his his servant um, was amazing. Um, and he respect Jesus, his honouring of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, they called him Lord. You know, a man who was Lord in his own world um, could uh, humble himself and call Jesus Lord mm-hmm. and come on behalf of his servant. I think that's that's why Jesus was astonished the way he, um, yeah. you know, the faith of this centurion. It's interesting that he was paralyzed. Mm. 
and there were some some nasty diseases around at the time. Just um, speed reading through a commentary there a little bit. Um, there were some some nasty things around at the time linked to polio that did result in paralysis like this. And so there there were conditions that could happen. And um, you know the fact that he, he was paralysed was real. I mean, it was just so. This guy just can't move. He can't do anything. He's, yeah. you know, how how do we cope with this? What you can imagine the whole house trying to think. How do we fix? It? How do we do? How do we function? Yeah. And if it's a high ranking ser- servant who's who's in charge of the household and making everything else happen, you'd soon notice when those things don't start happening. When you know, and the centurion's compassion to go to Jesus for his servant is beautiful. And and it and it shows something about leadership. Good leadership, you know that care for the the folks under them, not not mm. their status in and their position, and and that's the kind of general you want, isn't it? Na- Napoleon was famous for being compassionate to his soldiers, um, although there were some examples where he wasn't too great with that but but there the, that compassion was the linkage that's why they followed him because they knew he had their interests at heart and that massed a whole massive army off that reputation you think the centurion here cares for the people under him but he says i could tell this one and go and he understands authority mm. nor did he know jesus had the authority to do that with healing this is a mystery to me. You know, I'm thinking, how did he manage to get something from the realms of authority and apply it to healing? And we've got the story here where Jesus touched the leper. Okay, there could be some, you know, almost like jump leads of healing. Mm-hmm. You know, something happens. But but the word of authority and over geography didn't matter. <laughs> and I'm thinking that is huge level of faith. Mm. The fact that Jesus is amazed by it. I mean, even someone under Roman authority, you've still got to get the little guy to go running across to deliver the message. You know, mm-hmm. you've still got some of the, but this guy knew that Jesus had the authority to deliver just through his, you, you just say the word and he's healed. Don't come under, yeah. don't, don't bother mm. yourself. Uh, you know, <laughs> you're thinking, wow. <laughs> mm. Not only to heal someone paralyzed in his home, Right. Not, not only the the ability to do it, but he also knows if you're willing, this can happen. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's that last part, isn't it? When he, then Jesus said to the centurion, "Go, let it be done, just as you believed it would." And his servant was healed at that moment. Mm-hmm. At that moment. <laughs> that moment. You know, not a day later. Not like you no. Know, it was that moment. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Love it. What do you think the centurion did with that? I don't know. <laughs> I was just thinking, <laughs> you know, he's done all that. He knows the authority. He's gone to Jesus and he says that to him. Go, let it be done. It's like amazing. <laughs> What was life like in the centurion's house uh, after yeah. that? <laughs> I know. You know, I know. The, Could you imagine? In the servants' quarters, what, what, <laughs> what did they talk about? You know, they couldn't um, phone home, could they? Didn't the, have a phone. In the, <laughs> <laughs> in the centurion's um, military men. Yeah. What? Yeah. what what happened amongst them as a result of this miracle? Yeah. Word must have got around, and it must have um, amazed them. <laughs> you know how how many of them came to faith in Jesus well, yeah. as a result of that? Yeah. It's quite a thought, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And and and, and we can only speculate, but mm. there's there's the first Christians in the United Kingdom were here in the first century and they were Roman soldiers. There was evidence, mm-hmm. archaeological evidence of crosses and things like that here in the UK 
that came in in the first century with the Romans. And you, you suddenly think, yes, we've got evidence that it did affect. And this is the thing, under, uh, uh, under an oppression of an exterior power like Israel was under, here in the kingdom of God, you see those authorities can even crumble down and become believers. <laughs> yeah. And there's yeah. no old spot. And mm. so we have a tribal and think, well, it's only us and all we're under oppression. <laughs> We, we never mm. spread any further. If we're looking and thinking what I've got can affect the whole world, mm. uh, we've got no tribal boundaries. And even when we're under oppression, we should expect our oppressors to turn to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's amazing. It's an overcoming kingdom. <laughs> boom. Boom. Oh, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. You could stay on this forever, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> so much in this passage. <laughs> but, whoa. <laughs> there's a lot in, in Jesus' teaching, but also there's a lot in what he does. I know. Show and tell, tell and show. Yeah. It, it's powerful. It's powerful. So powerful. The question is, what is God willing to do through us today? Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. able is he willing? Well, I think he is mm-hmm. willing to do great things through us. And so we need to lift our gaze, mm-hmm. not look at the barriers and say, well, oh, centurion, not sure. Or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, oh, government official, not sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. God's kingdom can go anywhere. You just need to follow him and follow. Well, what are you willing to do in this room today, Lord? What are you willing to do? Mm-hmm people I'm around today how can I show forth your kingdom how can I how can I pray for people to be healed how can I I see breakthrough wherever I am today it's, it's just a wonderful every day is an adventure I mean I don't know how anything mm. could ever be dull <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amazing it's through Jesus' eyes <laughs> amazing good word for the day Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to bask in this for a bit. We probably better finish there. We've we've reached, reached the hour or the minutes or the seconds that we should finish. Um, but thank you all for what you've brought and um, and what a joy just basking in God's word together. It's great fun. God bless. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining us today. If you'd like to find out more about Hope Church South Bedfordshire, you can find out off our website, www.hopecentral.co.uk. Also, you may like to visit us. We meet at a lovely old church uh, built in 1220 uh, in Tillsworth, part of Dunstable, uh, wider area. And um, you're welcome to visit us. We meet at half 10 in the morning and you'd be most welcome to attend and meet us there. Or alternatively, you can find us uh, broadcasting live on our YouTube channel which is also under Hope Church, South Bedfordshire. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope God blessed you loads.